It was a wet and windy Friday afternoon and I was bored out of my brain. I couldn't settle to do anything. And so I was in super procrastination mood. In fact, I think I possibly win the prize for the best procrastination act ever when I started working my way through 3,000 email addresses in my um, newsletter subscription list. And as I looked through them, I actually began to get quite excited. I thought my newsletter was a bit of a waste of time, but it turned out there were some amazing prospects in that list. In fact, there were prospects in there I would have chewed my right arm off in order to work with them. I completely had a turnaround in my attitude towards my email mailing list. So I decided that I had to make my newsletter the best newsletter it could possibly be. And that meant starting with the content because I knew I had a problem there. The thing is, is that the newsletter had always been at the bottom of my, my thinking, my task list. I got round to it sometimes, but I was a bit hit and miss. It didn't go out as much as it should have. In the end, I decided just to automate the whole thing and it would send out a newsletter every time I put a new post live. And But it really lacked something as a result. It just felt very dry, very impersonal and very boring. Yet a lot of people were still subscribed to it. 3,000 people is a reasonable number. And uh, they could have unsubscribed, so they had to be getting some value out of it. So I decided to keep the core of what, what the newsletter was about. In other words, the newsletter was about things I'd written on the blog. But I wanted to go beyond that. I didn't want to just stop there. I wanted to make this a real personal experience. I wanted to actively engage with my readers. So I wanted them to feel like I was writing just to them and nobody else because I knew that sales is about personal relationships. Somebody is much more likely to buy from you if they feel they know you, if they have a relationship with you. So that's what I started to do. I started to write about my week and what was going on. I asked them how they were getting on. I talked about the blog posts as well, but I tried to make it a lot more personal. And you know what? People started to reply to me. I started to get a two-way conversation going with people. And I would reply to everybody who took the time to email me, even if I didn't perceive that person as somebody I would want to work with. Because you never know. Not only is it rude not to reply to someone, also that person one day might become a prospect. And so it was worth me giving them the attention that they deserved. But. Once I got a great email newsletter in place where the content was good and that was all going well, I needed more subscribers. I needed to grow that list. And that began with the calls to action on the Boag World website. And I have to confess, the calls to action on the Boag World site were a little bit half-hearted. They kind of represented my attitude towards the mailing list. So yes, there were subscribe buttons. And yes, they were made to stand out, but there was no compelling reason for users to sign up. It just said subscribe. So I wanted to start playing with the possibilities. First of all, I made sure that the search box, sorry, the subscribe box was available the whole time. It wasn't hidden away like it had been. Then I want, then I looked at the headline that I used on that subscribe box. Previously it said subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Not exactly inspiring. So I started doing some multivariate testing on different headlines. And I used a tool called Optimizely, which makes multivariate testing incredibly easy. So I tested all kinds of different headlines. Some that were very feature benefit, uh, focused. You know, these are, this is what the newsletter covers. This is what it's about and some very benefits focused, you know, this is how it's going to benefit you. Now, the one that worked best, hands down, it completely, you know, it was twice as good as the nearest competitor, was, uh, was the line, become a web expert with our weekly newsletter. And it was because it made a promise to transform you, a promise to make you a better person, and we love that kind of stuff, don't we? We're really into self-improvement. We all want to be better than we are. And this newsletter promised that. Um, so 
that turned out to be the headline that I now use. It was twice as effective. I then explored some design changes and did some multivariate testing there as well and found out actually the simplest solution was by far the best. I tried lots of different things, but actually at the end of the day, going from a, a, a kind of very light background to a really dark background increased the number of subscribers. And the reason that that worked is because the rest of the site was very light. And so having it with a dark background punched it out, grabbed the user's attention, and so therefore improved conversion. So I ended up in a situation where I would managed to increase the number of subscribers um, who signed up each month by 100%. So I was getting twice as many subscribers per month that I was previously. So now I began to turn my attention to engagement. We had to do two things. We had to get them to read the emails and we had to get them to click on them. Let's have a look at that first one, getting people to read the emails. Now, I was shocked to discover that according to MailChimp, um, emails in my kind of sector have a read rate of about 17.2%. That means only 17% of people actually read the newsletters that they receive in my industry. And I was shocked at that. That seemed really low to me. So I wanted to beat that. In fact, I already was beating it, but I wanted to push even further. So again, I started some experimentation and I tested different headlines at different times. And I found two things worked really well for me. One is I mentioned the recipient's name in the subject line. That really helped to grab people's attention and get them to open the email. The second thing was to introduce a sense of urgency. If there was some sense of urgency in the headline, that went down really well and again would encourage people to open. And using those techniques and a few others, I managed to increase conversion, uh, uh, the open rate by 9.3%. So my open rate now stands at 37.7%, which is pretty good compared to the 17% that seems to be the standard in my industry. So I got them opening the emails. Now I needed to get them clicking on content. And this is where I was really shocked. Apparently, the industry average here is 3.8% click-through rate. Whoa, that seems really low. And in my opinion, what's the point of doing a newsletter and putting all that effort in if you're only getting 3.8% click-through rate? Now, in my case, I had a very particular problem that I discovered. Each of my news stories that I cover in the newsletter had an associated image. And lying over the top of that image is the title of the story. And the idea was, is people see the image, the image grabs their attention, they read the headline, then click through on the image to the article. And I was getting better than 3 point whatever percent, but I still wasn't getting a particularly high rate. And I knew that people weren't clicking through on that image, and I couldn't figure out why. So I played with various things, and in the end I concluded that people weren't realising that that image was clickable. So all I did was add a small arrow to each image showing that it was clickable. And you know, just doing that caused a 3.4% increase in the number of people clicking. 3.4. Now, considering it's only 3.8 is the average click-through rate at all, creating a 3.4% increase was really uh, impressive. And now my conversion rate, my click-through rate on emails is 8.9% just from taking the time. So why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you to drive home the point that testing and experimentation are so important. We have, uh, many website uh, owners have this kind of disposable attitude towards websites. And, and emails and all the rest of it. Oh, it's not working. Let's throw it out, getting a new designer and do it again. You know, there's this kind of boom bust that I've talked about so many times before. But actually, if you take what you've got and tweak it and iterate it and test it and monitor it, you can create dramatically improved results, whether it's a website or an email mailing list. 